Hello everyone, my name is Isaac Bancroft. I am your Mid-Atlantic District Educational Technologist and my role here today is going to show you how to use Microsoft Bookings as a way to allow others such as parents or other staff members to schedule time with you as an individual. I'm going to focus on uh, teachers first or parent-teacher conferences and then let's go ahead and get started. First things first, I'm going to start at office.com. I'm going to do most of my integration with Microsoft through office.com because to me it just makes so much more sense and it's easier to access whether I'm here at work or at home. Once I get to Microsoft uh, or office.com, I'm going to go to the waffle in the upper left corner and that's where I can gain access to all of my apps. Now I already have bookings here in my apps, but if you don't see it in yours, go to all apps and find bookings. I am going to tell you the next couple steps, you're going to be prompted through some uh, on-screen prompts to get this set up. Follow the prompts, read them, answer them appropriately. That will bring you to this stage here. Okay, so please pause this video now if you need to complete that on-screen prompt process. Once you're ready, replay the video and we'll pick up and go on. The next thing you need to do is turn on try the new bookings tab in the upper right corner. Um, everything that you're going to see in my demonstration is because of that new bookings view. Now you can go through this process here. I'm going to go through some of this real quick on the left hand side uh, so that you can know what to do to set it up and if you just go through the, the tabs on the left it will make it easier for you um, in the process of setting things up. So the calendar is what's coming up and what's on your bookings page. As you can see, I have some events coming up in the near future. My bookings page, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Now, I do wanna turn this on by default when you first turn it on, turn on bookings, it says no self-service. If you want your parent community to be able to self um, sign up for parent-teacher conferences, you have to turn it on available to anyone. Okay, once you do that, let's go through the buttons and just make sure your page looks like my page. If you need to pause the video at any time, please pause this video and make those settings. I'm going to say use newest version of bookings. Customer data usage sent, unchecked. Default scheduling policy. This is how it's going to be set. Now you can set this time increment to 20 minutes or to the time, a length of time you want for parent-teacher conferences. Again, if you're going to be an ISS and you need a 30 minute or a 45 minute or a 60 minute time block, you can also change that here. So time increment. Minimum lead time means it takes the person who's signing up with you, they cannot sign up with you under 12 hours or under two hours or under 24 hours. The idea here is that you have time to prepare for the people you're meeting with. So choose that time wisely. And maximum lead time meaning I cannot schedule past one year out, 365 days out. Send meeting invite to the customer. I highly recommend this. This will send an email invitation with any kind of Teams meetings links to the customer with the email address that they put in. General availability. Now for the purposes here, we're gonna leave this blank. You may see some information here uh, because that's what you put in in that setup process. Uh, you can leave it there or you can, you can exit out. Either way, it's up to you. Customize your, your page. This is how I have my page. Um, you can customize the colors, the, the design. And then the regional settings. Just make sure you're in the right time zone. Anything that I do, I'm going to click Save at the top. It will prompt you, just like it did for me. Customers. Customers will generate as you have people sign up for services. And services we'll get into in just a little bit. Staff, you should see yourself as, an, as the administrator. Um, and just make sure you see yourself. If you don't, let me know and we will help fix that. 
services, this is what you offer. So we're going to get into parent-teacher conferences. We can do um, one-on-one -on -one sessions, coaching sessions, digital support sessions, math support sessions. This is, this is where all the meat of the bookings comes from. Now, custom fields, we'll go into that in just a second, but you can create custom questions as part of your bookings page that you can get specific information on. So I have asked these two questions. How can I help you achieve your goal? And what is on your mind? Okay. Business information. Again, you see on my page, this is how I can name my, my bookings page. So basic details, if I want to rename my bookings page from Isaac Bancroft, Mid-Atlantic District ETISS, I could change it here in the business name, the currency, the education business type. Again, all that should be set up in that initial process. There's no privacy policy or terms and conditions to use this that we have applied here. My logo is my face so people know who I am. And you can put your face on here or you can put a visual representation of yourself or an avatar. And your business hours, again, this is my, my business hours are my duty hours. So this is important just to help look at um, what's available for you. Okay. Now, bookings does take directly from your Outlook calendar. So as I keep up my Outlook calendar, it's really important that I keep my, my duty hours organized. Um, if I'm doing something within those hours of my day that I have an event scheduled, in that hour of time or that specific time. It will impact, um, bookings will impact your Outlook calendar. So if you keep a, a paper calendar, we may encourage you to transition to your Outlook calendar. All right, so once you have all these fields set up properly and you're ready to rock and roll and you've saved it all, I want you to jump back up to services. Again, that's the bread and butter of what we're going to be working on. And I'm gonna start a brand new service called parent-teacher conferences. So I can add service here. And I'm going to rename this I do recommend that um, you have a colleague or a peer proofread all of your content to make sure it's spelled properly, grammar is correct. Parents make a notice of that. It does impact um, perceptions of who you are. So ask a friend. Okay, location. I'm going to turn this on to a Teams meeting. And I can add that Teams meeting automatically here by checking on that button. Now, we did say, or I want to make sure my my uh, parent-teacher conferences are only scheduled for 20 minutes. So I'm going to change my duration to 20 minutes. Now if I add a buffer time, you can do that. Um, just be aware that it changes your, your block of time from 20 minutes to, uh, if I add two minutes on the front end and two minutes on, or three minutes on the back end, it changes it from 20 minutes to 25 minutes on your schedule. So um, it's harder to get in three uh, parent-teacher conferences in a one-hour block of time, you'd only get in two because of 25 minutes versus 20. So just be aware of that, and you'll see it when you start looking at your calendar. Um, price set, uh, I, I highly recommend you say it's free. We do not charge for parent-teacher conferences. If there's any kind of notes that we need to be aware of, okay? Um, you can add multiple attendees, but be cautious of this for parent-teacher conferences. Um, I highly recommend just setting it as one attendee, and then if um, parents ask to have another parent uh, person added, you can personally invite them, or the parent can forward it to the, the other spouse or uh, sponsor. Um, and then I do encourage you to let the customer manage their schedule, their appointments. So if they have to reschedule, you don't have to go through them, or they don't have to go through you. They can just click on the calendar event and click the reschedule button independently reschedule so to a time that's better for them or for you. All right, so I do not have to save my pages independently. I can continue to go through the details on the left-hand side. Availability options. 
So this is saying it's going to pick up your default schedule. I want to turn that off because I want to customize this. Right? So again, it's got that 20 minute increments, still have to schedule it 12 hours in advance up to a year out. However, I want to set different availability for a date range. Okay? This is where I can specifically des designate a single day of my, my work week for parent-teacher conferences or single days, plural. So I know on the 24th and 25th of March, I have parent-teacher conferences. And I'm going to change this from book when staff are free to custom hours because I want to customize the hours that I can use. Right? So the 24th and 25th happen to be a Thursday and Friday. Well, I'm going to delete Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and only keep open Thursday and Friday. Now, I'm going to change my Thursday to start at 8 o'clock and I want to put in a lunch break at 1130. So for Thursday, I'm going from 8 to 11.30, but I also need to put in an afternoon session. So I'm going to add a block of time here. I'm going to say 12.30, and I'm going to change it to the end of my duty day and end at 3.30. I'm going to do the same thing on Friday. So you can see how I can schedule myself a lunch break as necessary. But Friday, I'm going to end at 3 p.m. instead of 3.30. That allows me to complete any paperwork and go from there. Okay, so on Thursday the 24th and Friday the 25th, I have set my schedule to only allow for blocks of time between 8 and 11.30 and 12.30 to 3.30 or 8 and 11.30 and 12.30 to 3. This is super important. Okay. Again, we're going to go on to assign staff on the left side. We do not have to save that just yet. It's important that I check my name so that people know that they're connecting with me. All right. Now, under custom field, this is where parents have to complete this information for parent teacher conference. There are certain things that may not be valuable for parents to complete. So custom address, customer address, not valuable. Customer notes, not valuable. However, I do want to ensure that customer email is, is there. And I, just in case I need to, a phone number is required, right? So I can require those. However, I also want to select these two and I want to require them. Now, I just noticed I have a grammatical error here. What on your mind should say what is on your mind. So I'm going to fix that in just a little bit. I'm over here on the left-hand side, reminders and notifications. Again, send a meeting invite to the customer in addition to the confirmation email. And what I really like about bookings is I can send, or the system will send, I won't do it automatically, the system will send reminders to your customers, to your parents, a day out or an hour before, depending on how you have it set up. So I am going to set a day before reminder, and I can customize the text on this, and it's going to go to the customer. Looking forward... to connecting with, with you soon. I'm going to save that change. And then I'm going to also add another reminder for one hour out. Again, to the customer. To See you soon. Okay, so I'm going to save that change as well. 
What's really nice is as I'm progressing through my day on Thursday and it's 10 o'clock, I don't have to remember to send an email at 9 o'clock. Microsoft Bookings will send these emails automatically to those customers um, as reminders. So it takes it off my plate and puts it onto the system. That's using technology to its fullest. All right, so now I've gone through all of my details on the left-hand side. I am going to save my change, but I have to go back and fix a grammatical error under the custom fields. So I come back to custom fields. I click on the pencil. And I save that change. So I fixed my grammatical error. I come back to services. I come back to parent-teacher conference. And I'm just going to confirm it updated that. And it has. Perfect. So I'm going to save my changes. Now, once I am here, you'll notice I have some details. And as I change the, my services, those details change as well. I'm going to come down to my bookings icon, my bookings link, and I'm going to copy that URL. And I just click the copy button, and now I'm going to paste it. It is specific to that individual parent-teacher conferences. Right now, it is showing. Oh, and I have to go back and fix this. This is why we look at it long before. So it's picking up dates and times based off of my schedule. But I only wanted to show uh, Thursday the 24th and Friday the 25th. So now I know I have to go back and fix some settings in my bookings. Before I do that, let me review everything else. I've got a name, an email, and a phone number. Those are required fields. And then I have my two custom uh, questions that I asked for. Now let's take a second and go back and fix our settings here because we only want to show those two specific days. I'm glad I made this error uh, so that you can see it because sometimes we make these mistakes and we just need to go back and fix it. Not a big deal. So I'm going to leave this page open and I'm going to go back to my default settings. I'm going to edit the parent-teacher conferences and availability options. That's where the issue is occurring. And what I'm going to notice here is that I'm saying connect and book whenever I'm free, but I don't want to do that for this specific event. I want to say not bookable because I want to use these very specific custom dates. And once I save it, it automatically saves here. I'll come back to my bookings page and I do a quick refresh. That should fix, perfect, it fixed my issue. So now I come to uh, March 24th and 25th. I can see that they are bookable because they are bold. And if I try to click on another date, it says there's no available options. All right, so if I am ready to select as a parent, I'm going to select a date, 920 works best for my schedule. But you'll notice also at 11.30, between 11 and 12.30, there's no bookings available because my schedule has said at 11.30 I'm done, but it looks like on the 24th I also have something else on my schedule, so it's saying you cannot do it. Okay. So I select 9.20, I put in the required information. Okay, and once I book it, it automatically goes to my email on file. I get this page here as a parent. This goes to my calendar. So when I go to my email that it sent from and I refresh, or that I entered in, and I refresh, I see my parent teacher conference is here automatically, and it automatically gives me the links. I can accept it, yes. And so when I go to my calendar, it automatically gives me all the links I need, the links to join. Of course, this looks funny, but it does work for parents. Um, and <clears throat> let's just say down the road, it, I have a schedule conflict and I need to switch it. There's that manage bookings page where it brings me back to this page here that I can do a reschedule or cancel or set up a new booking. So again, all this is fun and dandy. I highly recommend you pause the videos as you as you work through each step. Again, um, once you're on your parent-teacher conference, you can copy that individual booking. This is the link you would send to your parents uh, in an email. 
um, and allow them to do the self booking. All right, so we've looked at it from the parent side of it now. Now we're gonna look at it from the teacher side of it. So I like using my Teams calendar. Um, when I click on my Teams calendar here, it's gonna show my calendar. Now this is what I mean by keeping up with your calendar. You can see I have a very busy schedule across my days. Now I'm going to advance to March 24th where I did that Teams booking. And what I notice here is the information. So when it's time for that, that event, uh, for that particular parent schedule, I can click on this, um, this event here on the 24th. And what I really like about bookings again is I have all my contact information here, but I also have um, the questions that I asked for. So what were those, those custom questions? So I can prepare in advance. So here's uh, my parent response. And as a teacher, I can go in and advance, look at these responses, prepare some information, some data, some artifacts of learning, and be ready for that conference with my parents. Also, the link for joining will be here, or you can click the join button in the upper right corner. If you needed to forward this to a, an additional parent per their request, you could click forward up in the uh, top details section. And that allows you to forward it to additional family members who would like to participate in this parent-teacher conference. So um, just be aware of this information. Again, it comes all into your Teams calendar or your Outlook calendar. Uh, I prefer using Teams just because it's more efficient for me. And um, as I join my Teams calls, they automatically link for me. Okay, hopefully this is helpful to you as a teacher. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to your educational technologist at your school level. And um, your school ET will be happy to assist you. If your school ET has any questions, they'll reach out to me directly as well. And we will help ensure that this is set up for you um, in a timely manner. Again, pause the videos as often as you need to. Rewatch sections as you need to so that you have this ready. If you would like someone to review your bookings page to make sure it's working, it's functioning, ask a colleague, ask a neighboring teacher, ask your school ET who, who are all willing to help you. Um, and so I think uh, you will enjoy this experience once it is set up. All right. Hopefully this is helpful to you. We look forward to hearing uh, any kind of feedback and best of luck with your parent-teacher conferences.